How's it going, New World? Sephir here, and welcome back once again. Today, we will be going over a very highly talked about and requested topic, which is the town board missions and how you would level up and kind of deal with these things. Uh, so a lot of people have asked me how I'm getting levels from town board, and the thing is that all town board missions are not equal. You could spend one hour on town boards and get barely any experience. You could also spend five minutes on town boards and get an insane amount of XP. And that all depends on what you choose. So it's about time investment. It's about knowing which quests are good, which quests are traps, and kind of understanding the mechanics behind the town board. So I'm gonna go ahead and break that down for you today. As you could see in that previous part, I put, turned in a lot of weapon quests and certain quests come with different varieties for the crafting station. So we're gonna go ahead and break it down into like archetypes. Uh, so the first archetype that I wanna talk about in the town board is going to be uh, the armor and weapon smithing quests. These are quests that you always want to take uh, because when you take these quests, they require a very low amount of iron, uh, maybe rawhide, maybe some wood, they're all very easy to get ingredients that you probably will have anyways just from leveling and walking out into the wild. And so by saving these ingredients for the town board, you will enable yourself to turn in multiple weapon and armor smithing quests, which will not only skyrocket your weapon and armor smithing level, but will also skyrocket your character's experience level and your town um, standing, right? Your standing within the town. Whenever your town standing ranks up, you also get experience. It's a huge chunk as well. So as you can see, I turned in these armor smithing quests, right? I'm just gonna take another one. Uh, there are some traps that you wanna get rid of. As you can see me kind of clearing out this board, I'm getting rid of certain things. So we'll, we'll talk about all those in time, but you can see that I'm quickly just eliminating anything that I don't think is value, and I'm taking the things that I do know retain value. Uh, so again, armor smithing, weapon smithing, fantastic quests. These are really good. Uh, so next we'll talk about, in my opinion, the second best, which is gonna be potions. Potions are great, some of them. Not all of them, that's the catch. There's a caveat to potions. So weak health potions are fantastic. Weak mana potions are also good because the ingredients are easy to get. Now common is where you run into trouble. Common health and mana pots do require a bit more to obtain and it seems just to be not worth the amount of time. If you have the potions, then that's fantastic. You can turn them in. But I wouldn't hold on to these quests as most likely you will not be going out to get these things. And in fact, with potions, it's best to just turn in the potion quest when you actually have the materials on you. So just keep all these potions that you find. Try not to use uh, too many strong health pots because that's a major turn in, especially when you hit like level 30 and up. It's gonna start requesting strong potions and they give you so much XP. Strong mana, strong health, these are great. The other category that it requests from the town board would be regeneration. This one is a lot harder. I opt to skip this a lot of times because it requires ingredients and materials that are just too much for the time ask, right? Uh, the XP is not enough to be worth that. If I do have some of these regen potions from drops from monsters, I will turn them in. So my strategy is to use weak health potions for myself because I know they're so easy to obtain and those are the potions I usually uh, use most of the time and I save all my other potions for town board turn-ins. And once again, you can see me just kind of clearing this town board, getting rid of everything. I'm just taking the quest, dumping it out if I know that it's something that I don't need, okay? That's, that's the key thing. I don't need it, I wanna clear it out so it looks clean and visually to me and I know exactly what I wanna do. You can see these three static quests on the screen there. They were like a mission to go to um, some sort of a zone, I guess, and collect uh, an item. These are kind of traps because they take a lot of time. And I'll say loose traps because they can be good while leveling in the low levels. If you really have nothing else to do, you can complete one of those quests 
and sometimes they all sync up to the same area so a good little trick is you can take some of them that are the same and collect and when you get like three of a kind they all point you in the exact same spot then you can go and do that and that may be worth so that's that's the tiny caveat of that but generally i would say skip them they're also locked into their place uh, so basically what does that mean it means when you look at the town board those missions to go get something like do an actual quest not a turn in they're stuck in those spots the top uh the three spots so on the bottom left the far the rightmost card will always be locked in as one of those on the top left the rightmost card will also be locked in and on the top right the rightmost card once again will be locked in as a kind of go somewhere and fetch something quest and so these are the type of things that you probably want to avoid for the most part but do keep in mind that that is a maybe something to do in the lower levels when you're like shoot my town board is on cooldown and i have nothing else to do um so remember that that's town boards are refreshing every 30 minutes right so you need to get back and complete those as much as possible you need to complete those in the towns around your town or the towns that you can fast travel to very easily for cheap make sure you adjust your weight because you don't want to have high weight when you fast travel to these towns it will definitely take all your azoth and then once you're out of azoth you're basically stuck to doing town boards in one area so that's an important thing to note make sure you make use of your in cooldown your one hour in cooldown to teleport for free and also if you own a house you can get some cheap houses for like 2k on your first buy if you want to use your discount on the first one just for leveling uh, which I personally will be doing. I know some people are saving up for the big houses, but you know that's personal preference. Do what you wish. Um, so you can use that cooldown to get you to that place faster, and you can refresh the house cooldown on top of that for very cheap Azoth, and that Azoth travel is not affected by weight. So if you get to your house, you can use that to kind of store up and turn in a lot of these uh are like quests like the armor quests because they do weigh a bit of uh weight in your inventory right and so keep an eye on your timer right and i think that's what i'm doing here i'm just waiting around because i know that this town board is going to be refreshing here really soon in one minute so i'm going to grab this and then head to another town to kind of get things started there right so those are those are a few things about like the time and the travel uh, we'll jump into some more varieties next we'll talk about another trap which is animal hunt quests these there is a small caveat to animal hunt quests and that is if you are taking an animal hunt quest early game in a town that you're not going to return to for a long time and you know you're not going to do it it can be worth to take it because the animals you can kill globally like you can kill them in any region and it will count so when you do finally go back to that town you can turn it in but 99 times out of 10 you just want to get rid of these animal quests because they require you to go somewhere and travel time is the like that's the most time waste that you can do in new world is run from point a to point b that will suck up all your time so make sure that you keep that in mind and and by that like logic it makes animal quests a bad quest right because it wants you to go somewhere and then kill a bunch of something then come all the way back so unless all your animal quests happen to align maybe maybe that's a thing but really i would probably get rid of these hunting quests uh, the next one we'll talk about, which is also a trap, fishing quests. As, right now, as of the open beta, this is a trap. It takes way too long to fish. Good luck finding a tadpole. Good luck finding a large salmon. Good luck finding any salmon, for that matter. It It's a nightmare. Like You could sit there and spend 20 minutes, and you could get like one salmon. And then you salvage it, and you get like five meat and one oil. And then the quest on the board is like, hey, turn in 20 fish oil and you're like how the heck am i supposed to and the xp is just not worth it's it's actually just nutty um so just you know kind of be aware of that that's something that you know you need to do um so avoid the fishing quests like they're really not good some of the bait turn-ins can be okay if you happen to be picking up flint for the town board quests and things like that nature um so sometimes the bait turn-ins can be all right especially if you happen to have a lot of them but generally it's hard to get things like wood louse because you can only pick them up from a bush 
and it, I don't know why you would be picking up bushes. You would just chop down a tree to get wood anyways. Uh, you will get night crawlers from Flint, so that is a decent one. Um, so I would say that the baits are not bad. But the actual fish quest to turn in any fish or any oil or any or cook any like ingredient with cooking that requires fish, complete pass. Get rid of that immediately. And I guess we'll go ahead and chain into the next one, which is cooking. So cooking is actually quite good. As you saw, I did have a travel ration on the board there. Travel ration is something that is nice. Any standard cooking item that you can make, like light ration, energized light ration, travel ration, energized travel ration, these are all fantastic items because you can turn them in. They're very cheap. A lot of times you can use uh, honey to supplement for a lot of these cooking ingredients and honey is basically free it's in town it's on a timer just pick it up you can also use milk milk is also free it's there is a cow in every town if you don't know well not every town most towns some towns do not have it i know for a fact there is one in windsward there's definitely one in first light and i'm pretty sure there's some in the other town but most of them have a cow if you milk that cow you get 22 to 24 milk you can use one, each milk converts into a light ration, or you can use it as part of the travel ration um, ingredient. And that will basically allow you to turn in stuff for XP for free, uh, on top of just using it for healing in general. So make sure you're on top of your milk, you're on top of your honey, and use those to complete those town boy quests. Another great way to get ingredients for that is nuts. You'll see them out in the wild all the time, just walking through. If you ever see it, pick it up because it's got the same value as milk. It's got the same value as meat from an animal. So when you pick up nuts, you get like six to seven of them. But when you kill an animal, you get one piece of meat usually. So you can see the disparity there. It'll be easier for you to kind of uh, you know do what you need to do. Um, so again, cooking has these good quests. Now, there are bad quests in cooking. The bad quests in cooking are the things that require you to craft something, but some of them are good. So when you have to craft something involved with meat, that's usually a good quest with like pork or meat thing, something like that. If it has to do with fish, it's terrible. Get rid of it. If it has anything to do with herbs or berries, generally it's bad. There are some berry food uh, quests that are decent but that's going to be up to you it depends on how much like venturing you're going in certain zones and what berries you're picking up a lot of times it wants you to get strawberries too and strawberries are just awful to find they're, they're nowhere near as good but if you can get some of the ones that require cranberries and things like that it's pretty good to do um, so you'll get a feel for it you're gonna have to feel out a lot of these things I won't be able to tell you everything 100% but I will be able to get you most of the way there so that's it for food. Uh, we'll go ahead and talk about uh, leather. Leather, in my opinion, if you're someone that's hunting deer and buffalo quite a bit or skinning the animals, you do want to skin because skinning is great for leveling. It's fantastic. You get so much XP. So um, I'm very certain that in the closed beta, I was at 200 skinning before I even hit level 60. Um, and it was basically power leveling me straight up. Uh, so make sure you do that and you skin those things. So the skins, like the animal skins, like the leathers and things like that, if you are hunting, will be a decent turn in. But I would keep in mind that sometimes it asks for a lot of coarse leather. As you can see on the board, 50. That's, it's, it may be worth, it may not be worth. It just depends on you and how much you're doing in terms of skinning and stuff like that. So for me, I'll try to turn it in, but if I really don't have it, I'm not going to do it. I would consider this mid-level value, um, you know, taking a look at some of the things like that. It just doesn't seem to be worth. Um, so I would just definitely keep that in mind. So with skinning aside, I'm going to go ahead and talk about um, weaving next, which is fiber and linen. So fiber is actually really worth to turn in. You get a lot of it. It's not hard to get. You're going to need it to level up your herbalism or harvesting anyways. And it is a nice thing to kind of do because you will be gathering fiber to do some of the weapon crates, right? Like you can see me crafting them on screen right now. You know, it's going to take linen and things like that. You're going to need to be getting this anyways, and it's not bad. With linen, I would be careful turning it in because it can be worse sometimes, but sometimes you can turn in too much. As you can see, I have so much fiber and linen here. 
this is okay for me. At this point, I can turn in linen because I know I have a surplus. So check and see what you got, like what all you have available to you. Because when you skill all these town boards up, they will increase with your level. So well, let's also talk about that as well. That, that's an important factor here. So when you turn in town boards, they get better. They get better and better. And since they get better, they're going to keep scaling up infinitely. So it's going to ask you to get tier 1 ingredients, then tier 2, then tier 3. That XP is going to go up. The money is going to go up. The reputation is going to go up. So definitely make sure that you are doing these town boards because as it goes up, everything else is going to go up. So you're keeping on top of it. So that's why it's important to keep turning in specific types that you're focusing on because it's just going to further increase your leveling process. And if you start that early, it will be a valuable way to go all the way through um, you know, your duration to 60. Okay. So we are going to dive into the other topic, which would be ore. And I'm going to go ahead and lump in like stone stuff with this as well. So turning in flint is ridiculously good. You get so much XP for flint. And it's not hard to get, right? You just pick up any rock. There are some cracked rocks in certain areas like Weaver's Fen and Cutlass and stuff like that that sort of give flint as well. And they actually give quite a few flint instead of just the normal one from the pickup. So that's something to look at. Uh, but normally flint's very easy to pick up. It's very common to find around beaches and stuff. High value turn in. Flint is very good. Ore is another story. It will never ask you to turn in ore, but it will ask you to turn in bars. And the thing with bars is that the request is very high, and it's such a commonly used ingredient. When you turn in 90 iron bars, you're going to feel that pain. It's going to hurt for your weapon smithing and armor smithing leveling. And you're going to run out of iron real fast. So I would strongly suggest not to turn in bars. Do not turn in iron bars. Because you're going to use them for so much more. And it's just not worth. Like iron is the most contested point of a lot of crafting professions. So do not lose. Um, don't fall into that trap. Right? Do not fall into that trap. So we talked about iron bars. And now the last topic... Um, and that kind of goes true for star metal and stuff like that too. So if you do get up there, that means you already messed up and you turned in too many iron ore <laughs> bars. And so you just don't want to be there. Don't get in that position. Uh, because again, everything's scaling. It's going to scale up. Uh, so the other one is going to be stone. Stone is a good one to turn in. This is easy to get. You can get it anywhere. And it does not take much to make stone blocks. When you get to stone brick, it is also a great turn in. However, I would stop at stone brick because lodestone is a turn in after that and it is great however you will need the most lodestone in the world in order to create uh tuning orbs keys dungeon keys later and you're going to be wishing you had every single ounce of lodestone that you can find and please do not turn this in it's a huge massive mistake avoid this okay you need to choose wisely that is the that is the summary of this video right choose wisely on these quests um so don't turn in that lodestone keep that you need it for void stone you need it for tuning orbs dungeon keys you're gonna really hate yourself if you do that uh so well that's pretty much it for the ore category and let's see i don't think i'm leaving anything out we kind of covered fishing and all that stuff um, none of the other boards seem to be on the quest or like quests seem to be on the board. Sorry. Like jewelry crafting is just not there. It just doesn't exist. Um, like some of the other things are just not on the board. Like there's no engineering turn in. There's no like turn in for bullets or anything like that. Um, I'm pretty sure that covers roughly everything. So again, in summary, there are some quests that are worth. And if I miss something, I apologize. Uh, like, I'm trying to get everything in here. But the big takeaway from this is think about your time investment. Think about your travel plan. Think about the types of skills that you want to be turning in and the types that may not be worth your time. I did miss something, and I'll touch on it here. It's wood. Wood. Wood is actually a pretty good turn in because, as you can see, I have 500 lumber here. This is not actually hard to get. Uh, you can get it from any tree. I would put it on the same level with rocks, right? Uh, so getting things like wood and mature wood is pretty good. Now, when you get to lumber, 
that is an okay turn in, but really monitor that because it requires sandpaper and things like that. And you don't want to sap yourself of those resources because they're going to be very, very useful for the crafting professions later on. Uh, but getting up to lumber could be pretty good. Um, I don't know how much higher it goes than that. It probably does scale into weird wood and, um, you know, eventually maybe iron wood or something. But those are pretty high level uh, materials that you're probably going to want in the end game. So, you know, using and getting in this mid game is probably going to be best. So lumber turn ins like green wood, fantastic. Uh, turn ins like timber, really good too. Um, because you can go out and get wood pretty much at any point. Logging or the uh, sorry the lumber is where it gets a little spicy. You can do that a bit, but just monitor your sandpaper. And after that, you might want to start considering chilling back a little bit with the uh, the lumber and things of that nature. Um, so yeah, I think I actually got this wood to turn in um, that amount right here. So I think I'm going to make some timber and things of that nature. Um, so yeah, that, that's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, so pretty much just be paying attention to what you have going on right like that's the big takeaway and i hope that some of this stuff gave you an insight as to what you need to take what you do not want to take and once again you can spend one hour getting little xp or you can spend five minutes getting massive xp and you can kind of see that leveling process happen throughout the course of this video you can couple it and time it a bit better where every 30 minutes you're coming back to these things and creating um you know your town board quests and then going out and doing something of value like a dungeon an elite farm uh you know some quest or something like that like anything of that nature so like these are these are good things to look out for and just make sure you have in mind all right thank you very much for watching i know this was a bit lengthy but i do appreciate everyone kind of tuning in and i just want to make these sort of guides to help everyone get a better advantage at launch and not waste their time right that's the whole point of all this so if you did enjoy this content make sure to like subscribe hit the bell and so that way you can be followed and we will be putting out more videos every single day leading up to new world launch and we have those big leveling guides coming soon so you definitely do not want to miss out on that it will save you tons of time i promise <laughs> tons tons of time all right thanks everybody for watching uh we will catch you in the next video and we're so close to new world it's almost there i'm ready let's go